uncovering family secrets, a heartwarming Christmas surprise. I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this, but I just need to share my excitement somewhere, so I figured this counts as getting it off my chest. Shout out to r slash who helped me discover this subreddit. As the title suggests, my dad in 56 was adopted at birth. He grew up in eastern Canada and never really looked for his birth parents. The people who raised him are his parents, and he loves them dearly. They have always been wonderful grandparents to my sister, F-19, and me, M-22. All he had from his birth parents was a letter saying he was born out of love, but they couldn't support him when he was born. So, when my sister decided to get him a genetic test for Christmas, it was purely to find out our ethnicity, and the idea of finding his birth parents never even crossed our minds. When we received his results, we were surprised to find the names of two people who were perfect genetic matches to my dad. He had the option to reach out to them, so he sent them each an email and waited for their responses. Almost immediately, his biological dad, who I'll call Jim, not his real name, responded. He said how excited and happy he was to have found my dad and how he was looking for him for so long. My dad, who was usually an emotionally reserved man, was curled up on the couch grinning as he was texting Jim for the first time. I was still in shock from the news, but was so happy to see my dad even happier than when I graduated uni. Soon thereafter, he also received a message from his biological mom, Debbie, not her real name. By talking to them both, my dad learned the story of his birth and I think that it's absolutely wild. Debbie is the daughter of an Australian mining engineer and they all moved to Canada for his work when she was in high school. Later on, they moved to the Midwest, where she met Jim at the age of 17. They were high school sweethearts, and were thinking of marriage after they graduated, but then Debbie got pregnant. This being the 60s, this was a huge deal. Her dad was furious and sent her back to Canada to give birth and arranged a private adoption, as he knew of a couple who were trying to have a kid, my grandparents. Once she gave birth, she was able to let Jim know that she was being sent back to Australia. They never saw each again for the next 40 years. Jim apparently was only able to move on once he received a letter over five years later from Debbie, saying that she got married. Eventually, he got married too, and they moved to the West Coast, but his wife got into a terrible car crash and lost the use of both legs and one arm, so they were never able to have kids. Debbie had three daughters in Australia, the oldest of which is seven years younger than my dad. They saw each other for the first time around 12 years ago, as they reconnected on Facebook and Debbie happened to be taking a trip to the west coast of America. Both Jim and Debbie had always wanted to keep my dad, and so they tried for decades to find him. But my province apparently is one of the hardest places in the world to find adoption information, especially since my dad only received his birth certificate at his baptism, so their names were not on it. Jim had essentially given up trying to find my dad until genetic tests became popular. He asked Debbie to take every single one, and he did the same, about five years ago, in the hopes that one day my dad would take one. When he received my dad's message, he immediately wrote to Debbie, I found him. Since then, we have had several calls with Jim and his wife, and they are absolutely lovely. We are their only family since they don't have kids and I couldn't be happier. At the end of the month, we'll be flying to the West Coast to meet them. It has been harder to talk to Debbie as Australia is so many hours ahead of us, but she also is so kind and an absolute joy to talk to. I haven't met my three new aunts yet, but apparently one lives in London. It's crazy to think that I might have been within a few kilometers of her the few times I've visited. I also have five new younger cousins. A couple of them are huge fans of Japanese culture, so they're ecstatic to hear that they have half Japanese cousins. My mom is Japanese Canadian, so my sister and I are both half. We hope to visit them one day in Australia, but we might all meet up in Japan next year. I don't know how to end this. I am still processing everything. 
it's absolutely incredible to have my family grow so much, but also a little overwhelming. I'm so happy for my dad, for Jim, and for Debbie, and I'm so excited to get to know them better. I hope I get to meet my new cousin soon too. I feel so incredibly lucky that this happened, seemingly against all odds. My dad was initially raised Francophone, so it's a miracle that they even speak the same language. Anyways, thank you so much for taking the time to read through this, and my apologies for how long this post ended up being. I might post an update after I meet Jim and his wife. I hope you all have a wonderful day. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who left such kind and heartfelt comments on my first post. It's incredible hearing all of your stories. To those who were concerned that we would abandon my grandparents that I grew up with, that is most definitely not the case. They were the people I grew up with, and I absolutely love them two bits, although only my grandmother is still with us. All the incredible times I've had with her growing up are so much more important than blood, and I can't comprehend the stories I read where people forget about their adoptive parents or grandparents when they find their biological ones. I won't recap my previous post here because I'm lazy, haha. So we just got back from visiting Jim and his wife, who I'll call Mary, not her real name, on the West Coast, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. We spent a week in their city and got to experience so much with them. Our first time meeting them in person was very emotional and felt very surreal. We spent the whole day looking through my dad's and our old photos, basically catching Jim up on everything that he has missed over the past 56 years. We also got to see so many of his and Mary's old photos too, which was very cool. We went to a park near their house and on the walk, I heard Jim whisper my son with a massive smile across his face. Throughout the week, we explored their city and saw so many cool sights and tried so much delicious food. Mary knows her city so well, and it was great to see her favorite spots all around the city from food carts to gardens to museums. We all went to an incredible Japanese-American museum and Jim and Mary absolutely loved it. They were very keen to learn about the internment during World War II and said that they knew a bit about it before, but now it feels so personal. We went on two hikes with Jim. Mary wasn't able to come because she is in a wheelchair. It's so cool to have such an active and outdoorsy grandfather who is able to go on such long hikes. He taught us some foraging tips and told us stories from when he used to camp for years on end. Both he and Mary are very spiritual. So he also told us great stories from meditation retreats they've done. He's even tried psychedelics so he's definitely the cool grandpa. I won't go into precise details of places we went, but it was wonderful exploring such a fascinating part of the world with amazing people. We were all very sad when the trip ended and we had to leave. I've gained two new grandparents on the West Coast and I couldn't be happier. And they said that they've gained two grandchildren. I'm so glad that they see us this way. Mary told me her greatest regret in life was not being able to have children and grandchildren, but now she does. This has been such a transformative time in our lives, and I think it's incredible how many people are so much happier now because my sister happened to get my dad a DNA test. This is just the beginning of our relationship with our new grandparents, and I am so excited. Now we have to figure out a way to go to Australia to meet Debbie. Whenever that happens, maybe I'll make another update. Until then, I hope you all have a lovely day and thank you so much for taking the time to read our story. My mother-in-law insists on being called Mama. Am I losing my place as mom? I hate to bring my marital issue to Reddit, but I need reassurance that my feelings aren't unreasonable. My husband and I have a 17-month-old son, our first child, and the first grandchild on both sides. My mother-in-law has chosen Mama as her grandmother name. This makes me uncomfortable because I see myself as my son's only Mama, and sharing the title feels like it diminishes my role. I've told my husband multiple times that I'm uncomfortable with this, but he insists I'm being unreasonable and need to get over it. 
To further complicate the issue, our son has a pretty significant speech delay, he's not speaking at all, and his speech therapist mentioned this week that he needs consistency, and calling his grandmother mommy will be detrimental to his language development. It also further increases the importance of the word mama to me, when he finally says it to me. It will be such an incredible moment that signifies all the long and hard work I've put into helping him grow and develop his speech. Even after bringing the speech concern up to my husband, he still thinks I'm unreasonable, and I'm on my own if I want to cause an issue with his mother. At this point, this is the most upsetting part, that I've expressed my feelings repeatedly, and he completely dismisses them and doesn't have my back. I want to speak to my MIL about it when I see her in person next, but I'm terrified of potentially blowing up our relationship and being left all on my own as the crazy daughter-in-law without my husband to back me up. Am I being crazy here? For reference, his family is not Hispanic, or from the southern U.S., or anywhere similar, where a grandparent mama is more common slash accepted. He called one of his grandparents mama, it must have not bothered my M.I.L., which is great for her, but obviously we are different people and I have my own feelings on the matter. I also am already in therapy for my people-pleasing tendencies and we have couples therapy sessions as well. Edit. Thanks for the replies and giving me the courage to have this convo with my MIL. Confrontation is so hard for me, but I'm going to do my best. My relationship with my MIL is otherwise great and I love her a lot. She's not the overbearing type at all so this is totally out of left field. Yes, she wants it pronounced like regular mama, not mama or memo. I have overheard her babbling mama mama to my son, and explicitly saying, I want him to say my name first. She's bought mama apparel and mama jewelry, and other such things that I have thought are clearly meant for new mothers. It's overall wildly inappropriate IMO and I'm so confused where this is coming from, but I will set the boundary that this isn't okay. The larger issue is, that this is just another instance in a marriage where I don't feel my feelings are respected. It's exactly what I'm in therapy for, learning to build my confidence and self-esteem, and how to stand up for myself. My therapist agrees with me that this is a reasonable boundary BKW, but I entirely shut down the idea of confronting Emile at the time because I was too scared. I've made a lot of progress since then though and feel more ready now. Getting confirmation here that I'm not crazy gives me the last push of confidence I needed. But I'm really sad that my husband doesn't see it this way at all. I want a life partner who is my cheerleader and supporter, who is proud of me for making these changes and setting boundaries for the first time in my life, and it hurts that I don't have that. Typing this all out has helped clarify why I feel the way I do, and I'll be talking some more with my husband before the convo with my MIL. I may show him the comments here if I have to. Thank you for confirming I'm not crazy. Comments Automatic is L74. First you're not being crazy. The professional speech therapist advise against it. Have you told your mother-in-law what is recommended? Granny is not mama you are. She is being unreasonable. You mentioned you are in therapy for people-pleasing tendencies. Time to put some of what you have learned to work. Time to tell the marriage counselor your husband has no backbone with his mother. Tinani, and Miles don't get to choose mama as their name against the mother's wishes. And weak husbands should not be allowing it. If he doesn't get his act together and rein her in, she will continue to overstep and he will continue to let her. You're not overreacting. This is the hill I would die on. Stand up for yourself firmly. This is unacceptable, I will not allow it, you fix it or I will. But if I have to do it, you won't like how I do it. The problem with people pleasing is everyone gets to be happy except you. No one cares if you light yourself on fire to keep them warm. If your therapist doesn't back you up, find a new one.
I posted last year about my Emil choosing Mama as her grandmother name, how wildly inappropriate I find it, and how my husband thinks I'm overreacting and doesn't have my back. He eventually told her that she needed to choose a new name as I am Mama in my son's speech therapy sessions, and their solution is that her name is now Mama Joe, Mama first name. I have overheard her say, I want him to say my name first, I don't want to give up Mama because he's going to say that before any other name, etc., multiple times. I feel like I'm living in crazy town and am going insane. This new name is literally not any different whatsoever, especially considering the justification of why she wants to be Mama so badly. When my toddler finally does say Mama, he's too but speech delayed and can't make the M sound yet. It's going to be for me, his mother and me exclusively. I've given up on trying to convince my husband to get on my side. I'm going to speak to my MIL directly next time I see her in person, but it's going to be a big blow up and I'm really upset my husband still cannot see why my feelings are hurt by this. I think more than anything else this has become a massive marriage issue between us. He has a habit of often invalidating my feelings and telling me I'm overreacting. And to be fair I am a very sensitive person. But this situation has proven to me that even if I'm being the most reasonable person in the world, he still will consider it overreacting. I'll finally stand up to my MIL myself, but I just wish my husband had my back. Editor's note. It is likely OOP added the edit a few days after the update. Edit. An actual update and an end to this saga, Mama Jo is now Nana. My husband messaged her saying the speech therapist says she needs to pick a new name. I followed up with a video chat saying that it's not really about the speech therapy, it's about me and how I feel about it, and she was totally understanding. So, problem finally solved, it just took me two years to grow a spine. As far as the comments calling for divorce, Blaming me for being in an awful marriage, etc. Yes, I'm aware of my massive self-esteem issues. Thank you for lighting a fire under my, but to at least resolve this finally. I'm in lots of therapy to undo my people-pleasing personality. I'm a major work in progress. We're in marriage therapy to navigate the issues that have come up after 15 years of me sweeping my feelings under the rug. This is hard, but I am trying my best. Relevant comments. RO 489, that's crazy. Makes me think you both might be able to unhack how his mom's narcissism impacts how he reacts to you. Does his mom diminish his feelings? OP, now that you mention it, I'm immediately reminded of the period of time when we lived with my in-laws. And the way Maya Miles spoke to his sister during arguments was nearly verbatim, the same way he diminishes my feelings. It was a huge light bulb moment for me at the time when I realized he was just copying what was modeled to him, and I've totally forgotten about it until now. I can't think of a single time he's ever had an issue personally with his mom in the 15 years we've been together, but he also never talks about his feelings and keeps everything inside so that's another problem in and of itself. RO489. So he's the golden child and that's probably a different dynamic to work through. OOP, you may be onto something here. His brother has also, or relatively recently as an adult, had arguments with his mother so bad that he was NC with my in-laws for a bit 